Hi, my name is Bill Kinney, and this is the first video in a series that I'm making called Quick Pre-Calculus Review for Calculus. So if you're going into calculus and you want that quick review of your pre-calculus concepts and skills, this is for you. It's also part one of a sub-series, or you might call it a unit, that I'm titling Comparing and Contrasting Linear and Exponential Functions, which hopefully you recall are very simple and commonly used functions to model basic growth and decay. The main mathematical point that I want to make in this particular video is how to find a formula for a linear function if you're given an initial value and you know also the rate of change or slope of that linear function. Another goal that I have is to teach you how to use a computer program called Mathematica. And in fact, what you see here is what's called a Mathematica notebook, where you're going to use Mathematica to do, uh, to help us understand what's going on in pre-calculus and calculus. Um, if you don't have Mathematica, that's okay. I hope you still can get a lot out of this. I hope you might be inspired to get Mathematica. You can do some of the things that I show you here at a website called wolframalpha.com, but it's not quite as flexible as what I'm going to show you. The main thing we'll do in Mathematica in this video is use a basic command called plot to help us graph the linear function that we are going to be constructing. <clears throat> but before we get into that, let me address what's a common question for many people. Is Mathematica worth the effort? Okay, uh, Mathematica is a challenging program to use, um, but I, as you might guess, do think it's worth the effort. I use Mathematica in a number of ways. One basic way is certainly to check my work, to look for mistakes in my work when I do it by hand, but also to do work that I couldn't do by hand so easily. Another big thing that I do is I use Mathematica for simulations and I think they're kind of neat and I want to show you a couple of those simulations to try to inspire you to either want to get Mathematica or learn it at least. What I've got here is a snippet of code, it's not the entire code, that's going to generate kind of a neat animation and I'll go ahead and enter this code and by the way when I enter Mathematica code I might as well tell you right away that you need to have the cursor somewhere in this cell that you see here it doesn't matter where you put it and if you do a shift return that will enter the code and it will run it and the simulation that you see here is kind of neat. It's a little toy planetary system here, little toy solar system. I can play the animation, and you see the planets going around the sun. If you know anything about Kepler's laws, you might realize, hopefully, that these planets are following Kepler's laws. For one thing, their orbits are ellipses with the sun at a focus. Secondly, they are actually sweeping out equal areas and equal times, which is another one of Kepler's laws. It's hard to tell that exactly here, but you can see they do move close, uh, faster when they're close to the sun than when they're further away. That's part of what equal areas and equal times implies. And there's also a relationship between how long it takes them to go around uh, the sun and the what's called the semi-major axis of these ellipses, and I won't get into that. Here's something I found off what's called the Wolfram Demonstrations Project by somebody named Hiroki Sayama. It's some code that generates a pretty neat um, simulation illustrating what's called a predator-prey system. What you want to think of when you look at these things is you want to imagine the orange dots are foxes and the purplish dots are rabbits. And you want to imagine that foxes, the foxes eat the rabbits, though that doesn't necessarily happen in the, in the wild. I want to run the simulation here and you can watch how the foxes chase after the rabbits and try to eat them so we've got a spatial component to this as well and you can change different parameters you can change the growth rate of the rabbits and their mobility etc it's kind of a very neat simulation and let's see if the foxes eat the rabbits up here well okay it doesn't look like they're going to quite do that I think I'll stop it so that's a couple of neat simulations that I wanted to show you to try to inspire you to learn Mathematica and here's our example. Okay, so now we're going to go back to some math here. The city of Austin, Texas, and I looked this up on Wikipedia so you know for sure it's correct. Ha ha ha. It grew from a population of about 790,000 in 2010 to a population of about 885,000 in 2013. That's quite a bit of growth, actually. Based only on this information, we want to try to estimate the population of Austin in the year 2020. Now, there are lots of different ways you could try to do this, okay? What's the simplest way to do it? That's what we want to focus on in this video. Let's assume that this population is modeled by a linear function. 
Okay, that would be the simplest kind of assumption that you can make. It's going to be a graph that's going to be a straight line. That's why we call it a linear function. All right. Hopefully you recall that such functions take the form, well, often they're written y equals mx plus b. But if you've got an initial population at time zero, I'm going to imagine 2010 is time zero. That's the 790,000 here. And you've got a rate of change, a slope, which is going to be the change in the population. The growth here looks like it's 95,000 divided by the change in the time. 2010 to 2013 is three years. So the general form of the formula is going to be that the pop, I'll write it in words here, the words here, the population will equal the initial value, initial value plus the rate of change, put this in parentheses here, rate of change times, I'll put a cross in here for times, times the time, where time equals zero is the starting time. Okay, so that's a basic kind of formula that can generate a function that's going to be a linear function that's going to model this kind of situation. So, again, I the initial value is the 790,000 here. So I could write p for the population equals f of t, so this is going to be a function of t. The initial population is 790,000. I could type that as a 790,000. Or I could say let p be in thousands and then just do a 790. Why don't I go ahead and do that? Just keep in mind that p is measured in thousands here. p is the population in thousands. What's the slope? That's what I have to put here. The slope is the same as the rate of change. I'll put a dot this time instead of the uh, cross. And t is going to be the time since the beginning of 2010, and I'm, I guess I'm implicitly assuming that this population is at the beginning of 2010, though that's not necessarily true. Okay, what is the slope? The slope, hopefully you recall, is a rise over run, change in P divided by change in T, and a common thing in math is to use a capital Greek letter delta, looks like a triangle there, to represent change in, change in P, divided by change in t. That is going to be a symbolic way, a common kind of symbolic way to represent the slope. The change in p, that's the change in population. It's a difference. 885,000, um, and I'll just write that as 885 since I'm in thousands, minus 790,000, divided by the time elapsed, 2013 minus 2010, this is going to be 95 divided by 3. Hopefully you can do that in your head. That's going to be 30, um, let's see, 31.6 repeating, approximately 31 point, oops, open this up here, 31.7 thousand people per year. It's important to put the units in there. This is a ratio that's a rate of change. The units are going to be the units of the quantity in the top divided by the units of the quantity on the bottom. 31.7 thousand people per year. That will be the rate of change. That will be the slope. So ultimately, the formula here is going to be 790 plus 31.7 times t. This is an approximation. All these numbers are approximate anyway, so it's not a real big deal. There's our linear function to model the situation. How can we use the plotting command to make a basic kind of plot here? That's what I'm going to finish the video off with. Plot is a, a command, a function in Mathematica. Functions in Mathematica always use square brackets for their input, not parentheses. That's the first thing to realize here. By the way, how did I get into this mode? This is text mode up here. I clicked down underneath the text until I saw a horizontal line, and then I started typing my code. And it comes up in a mo in a, it looks different, and it will run this code that I'm typing when I go ahead and type it in. Again, the square brackets indicate that this is a command. This is a function. I want to put some inputs in here. The first input should be the function that I'm going to graph, 790 plus 31.7 times t. I'll just put the t next to it. Then you put a comma. You put commas in between the separate inputs for the function. The next thing you want to put is the range of values for t, and here's the way you do it. You use curvy braces like this. Let's say t goes from 0 to 10 because I want to go out to 2010. 
This will produce a basic plot. I will show you in the next video that there's lots of ways you can dress up this plot, but this is the basic syntax to produce a basic plot of this function. Here we go, there it is. It is a straight line. It's got a vertical intercept equal to the initial value, the 790,000. Remember, this is in thousands here, and you can see this is crossing this vertical axis at 790. This is not the origin here. And it does have a slope of 31.7. You can see, for example, if t increases by 2, y increases by about, well, you could estimate that it might look like it's about 64, and that will be close to 64, which is, um, if you do 64 divided by 2, you get 32, which is close to 31.7. What's the estimate for the population in the year 2010? That's the final thing we are after here. It would be the value of this function at t equals 10, because t is time since the year 2010. So this is going to give us the population in the year 2020. I, I don't know if I said 2020. I meant to. That's our goal. Go up to the graph. It looks like the population is going to be around 1,100,000, which would be the same as 1.1 million. Is that going to be accurate? Not necessarily. Probably not, in fact. But that's our initial model uh, of the situation, our initial first guess as to the population of Austin in the year 2020.